everyone. Hope you're doing good today. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm going to talk to you today about a very easy to miss fossil in our fossil collection. If you walked by it, you probably wouldn't even know what it is. They're very obscure, very unusual, um, and I think you'll really be fascinated when I tell you a little bit about what it is and, and why it's cool because it doesn't even look like like anything that would be that interesting, but um, I'm going to break it down for you and you'll see it's actually really, really cool. So um, we have, as you can see, a lot of fossils to choose from. Um, and some of them are large and, uh, you know, for example, fossil cave bear skeleton back there, that's pretty hard to miss. But some of them are teeny tiny, but are just as interesting and fascinating. And so today I want to talk to you guys about fossil bryozoans. So this is something you might not even necessarily know what it is if you were just walking by it. You might not recognize it as a fossil. It just kind of looks like a pebble, um, a spotted pebble. Not really sure what's going on there. Um, these are 385 million years old. Um, they're from Morocco. Um, but bryozoans are actually a life form that exists today as well. So these are their ancient ancestors, but bryozoans exist today as well. They are marine creatures. They live in, o in oceans and, and seas. Uh, I think there are also a few freshwater species as well, um, but they're common all over the world um, and they're teeny tiny and very easy to miss. Um, but I have a few here that I wanted to give you a closer look on. So as you can see, they have different shapes, right? So we have um, round ones, we have straight ones, but they essentially kind of all look like pebbles. Um, and you might not necessarily realize what it is that you're looking at. And so um, what I wanted to point out is that what you're actually looking at is not a singular animal, is not a singular life form. All these pieces are actually what they call kind of like the skeletons of these creatures, but the creatures themselves were almost microscopic and they lived inside the tiny little holes that you see. So you can see there's like these little kind of spotted cavities, right, that are filled in now, but um, when they were alive, they would have been little tiny holes. And so the animals themselves actually lived inside of those. So you have to look at these, look at these kind of like apartment buildings, right? So these are all a bunch of housing structures built by the tiny animals themselves, but the tiny animals lived inside these little tiny holes and they were fixed inside these holes. They did never, they never moved. They were not, they're completely stationary creatures. And um, they had these little tiny tentacles that would reach out um, and, and kind of like, that's how they would be able to eat. Um, they, would, they would reach out into, um, uh, reach out into the water and collect little tiny particles with their teeny tiny tentacles. So you have to see these creatures would be living inside these little holes. And so they would reach out and grab food or whatever it is that they needed and bring it back in. And the, um, the, they called them colonies, right? These are colonial animals, right? Animals that live in, in a group all together. Uh, they would actually be started by a single tiny, tiny creature. Um, these, when, so bryozoans are the name that we give to the, um, this, this structure. Um, but the individual animals were called zoids. And so the colony would be started by a single zoid that would, I guess, um, you know, float off from, from a previous colony and it would reproduce itself. It would actually clone itself. And that's how it would make more, um, you know, more friends to create this colony. And then they would little by little, they would have these excretions and that's how they would build up the skeleton which is called, you know, the bryozoan. So it's really fascinating when you think about it. We don't have, obviously, any fossil record of the individual zoids that lived inside the bryozoans. We just have the bryozoans themselves. But because this is a, a, a type of creature that exists today, we're able to kind of backtrack and imagine what they might have looked like, what, they, what their behaviors might have been like, and it's really so interesting. You might walk by this without realizing that this is a teeny tiny, basically, apartment building 
for teeny tiny creatures. So um, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about bryozoans and zoids. Um, they are really very unusual and um, yeah, kind of a neat fossil for just a few bucks. Uh, you can get really uh, a very interesting story behind a very cool fossil. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.